If you're new to League or just new to a specific role, then this video is for you. We're going to be breaking down 10 champions, two for each role that are not only very easy to pick up, but are actually quite powerful at the same time. It should take you a minimal amount of games to get the hang of these champions, and once you do, they'll provide you with no shortage of carry strength. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work and if it doesn't work for you you shouldn't pay learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below one of the best top lane champions you can play if you're learning the role or are new to the game is Nasus. Nasus may not have the most impactful early game for any champion but that's actually what makes him so consistent your sole focus throughout the early game should be to acquire as many Q stacks as possible so you can transition into that late game monster farming is extremely important on all champions but even more so for someone like Nasus, who gains more than just gold and XP from securing minions with Q. If you start off by simply hard focusing on your farming with the champion, after a while you can then start to branch off and look for trading windows, but what makes Nasus so great is that you don't need to be worried about multiple different things in lane when you first pick him up. Just simply farming efficiently and getting to level 6 with a bunch of Q stacks is a really great win condition. Once you hit level 6, you can then start to look for all in opportunities if the enemy disrespects you and waste their spells on the wave. What's actually super broken about this is that since you've played quite safely early in lane, the enemy won't expect you to play aggressive at all. On your level 6 spike, you can then surprise them and pick up some really easy kills. To make your all-in power even stronger at 6, you should run Ghost as one of your summoners. Other summoner spells should be Teleport, and don't be afraid to use it early in lane to help with your sustain. There's absolutely no reason to use Teleport other than back to lane on Nasus for the first 14 minutes, so if you drop low from Poke, don't be hesitant at all to heal up and TP back to lane. Core build you should be running on Nasus is a Divine Sunder Rush into Frozen Heart 2nd and a Situational Tank Item 3rd. Fleet is the Keystone Rune and you're also going to run Resolve for secondary, grabbing 2nd Wind to help with that early sustain. If you want to play a top lane champion who has a little more early game impact but is still super easy to pick up, then look no further than Garen. What makes Garen so great for newer players is that his trading combo is super easy to execute and you have a very clear win condition when it comes down to trading in lane. Garen's W offers him so much added tankiness for a few seconds, which means whenever it's up and you use it when you jump in for a trade, it's highly likely you're going to come out on top, especially if you take Phase Rush as your keystone rune, because you want these relatively quick trades early on with Garen. The Phase Rush allows you to take the trade and then dip away super fast after the fact, so you take minimal damage in return. It's actually such an obnoxious trading pattern, and if you can just play around W and Phase Rush cooldowns in lane, you're going to set yourself up for success. To really take your trading game to another level, our Master in Minutes course on trading can help you out tremendously on someone like Garen. Everyone likes to talk about the level 2 spike in lane, but level 3 is actually where Garen can really run over the enemy in the 1v1. If you can hit that 3 before the enemy and they do not back off, this is a great window for you to either get a massive chunk off or pick up an early kill. What makes Garen so powerful with a lead compared to many other champions is that he just stat checks everyone and there's nothing the enemy can do to counter it. You literally cannot miss your damage with Garen, so as long as you're playing around your ultimate cooldown and not taking 50-50 fights without it, accelerating leads and taking over games is easier with Garen than the majority of top laners. Build you should be running is a stride breaker rush into the double zeal and then hull breaker third. If you're looking to learn Garen, Wrist is the main guy you're going to want to check out as he's the one who pioneered this build and streams over on Twitch. Rune page is phase rush with Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, and Gathering Storm. Grab conditioning and overgrowth for secondaries. For our jungle selections, we've got two champions with completely different playstyles, so you can choose based on what you prefer. First up is going to be Trundle, and the champion is an absolute monster when it comes down to those early game skirmishes. If you want a jungler who can be proactive early on, then Trundle is a great pickup if you are new to jungle or the game in general. The champion takes no mechanical skill to play at all. The most difficult mechanic Trundle has is the auto reset that his Q provides, so getting used to that auto Q auto combo when you are clearing your jungle or are fighting is key, but super easy to learn. What makes Trundle's skirmish so lethal is the fact that he not only does damage with his Q, but he steals the enemy's attack damage in the process. This makes Trundle super disgusting into heavy AD compositions, and he can do very well into many of the junglers you see played more often in the lower ranks, like Master Yi, Kane, and Lee Sin. Something you can do on Trundle especially if you're going up against a very weak early game jungler like Master Yi, Ramus, or Kane, is get tabs on where they start by dropping an early ward on their topside buff. You can then go for a 3 camp into invade strat and easily look to beat them out in the 1v1. Of course, if your laners are pushed in under their tower without priority to move, then this becomes more risky and you're better off just continuing to clear or look for a gank. Being as proactive as you can with Trundle though and scoping out these potential invade plays is how you're really going to get the most out of him. The core build to run on Trundle is a divine 
Sunderer Rush into Titanic Hydra second and Blade of the Ruin King third. Lethal Tempo is the best Keystone Ruin with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras, followed by Magical Footwear and Approach Velocity for secondaries. Flipping the switch over to a more farm heavy jungler, our second recommendation is going to be Shivana. Shiv is definitely a bit easier to pick up right away and find success with compared to Trundle, just due to the champ having less options early on. There's much less variance when playing Shivana, as full clearing and hitting 6 as soon as possible is what's going to work best in the majority of games. Of course, if a free gank is there, then you should take it, but a lot of gank plays that many other junglers can pull off early on just aren't as reliable for Shivana due to her having no gap close and no CC setup. If you can cycle your camps on respawn, take Dragon dragons whenever your bot lane has priority and play around the level 6 spike, you should see great consistent results on Shivana. Our latest course uploaded to the website actually covers jungle efficiency in detail, which can really help you out on a champion like Shivana. Build versatility is really nice for Shivana right now, as you can go AP or AD depending on your team's needs. AP is what you should be prioritizing if possible, as the mid to late game power is just absolutely nuts. AD can work great though in games where your top and mid laner are both playing magic damage champs. Rune Page when playing the AP build is Dark Harvest, while you want to be running Prestia attack when going for the AD build. Unless Annie receives some sort of massive rework, she will always be the perfect mid laner if you're new to the role or the game in general. Farming efficiently is super easy on Annie due to her Q reset, and it allows you to consistently collect CS even if your farming skills are horrid. For an all-in combo that is super linear and easy to execute, it deals a ton of burst damage and has very little counterplay. What makes Annie so great is that it really never matters if the enemy has a fed ADC or fed squishy carry, because if you can be consistent yourself, win lane, and stay ahead in items, you're always going to be able to focus that carry and eliminate their threat. In the mid to late game, you almost want to play Annie like an assassin, waiting patiently in the fog of war around choke points to where the next objective is spawning. Annie's combo being super linear is a double-edged sword, because you literally have to run in a straight line at the enemy and get pretty up close to deal your damage, so playing Aram in the mid game is not really optimal. If your team insists on just grouping up mid, you should be looking for potential flank angles to where you can enter a fight from the side and take out the enemy squishy. You really just want to try and limit fighting straight up and running right at the enemy, because it's the easiest way for the enemy to react and either flash away or land their abilities on you in return. The core build for Annie is Eludin's Rush in Shadowflame second and Zanya's or Rabadon's third. Roll with Electrocute is the Keystone Rune, followed by Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, and Relentless Hunter. Optimal secondaries are Mana Flow and Absolute Focus. For the second mid lane selection, it's one of the best scaling champs in the entire game, being Vagar. Similar to the Nasus pick we had for the top lane, Vagar is a champion who is rewarded more for farming than your average champion. Being able to stack up AP whenever you kill a minion with your Q is extremely powerful. You can always be impactful with Vagar as long as you can farm well, which gives you a super simple win condition. Early game trading power is completely non-existent with Vagar too, so it just makes hard focusing on getting as much farm with Q as possible a no-brainer. Run the teleport for your secondary summoner spell, and if you drop low in lane, base and use teleport back immediately. A really underrated strategy you can run on Vagar that should really be run on more mid lane mages is starting the game with Mana Crystal and Refillable Potion instead of Adoran's Ring. This allows you to get to that lost chapter much faster, which will keep you topped up on mana so you can keep farming as efficiently as possible. The core build you'll want to run on Vagar is an Everfrost Rush into Rabadon's second and Zanya's third. First strike is the Keystone Rune with Magical Footwear, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Pick up Mana Flow and Transcendence for secondaries. Making our way down to the bot lane, our first ADC recommendation is going to be Sivir. Something a lot of newer ADC struggle with is keeping up consistently high CS scores, and Sivir is a really great champ in helping you cheat that a little. In the current state of League where Static Shiv is a really great rush item, Sivir has the best wave clear for any ADC. Shiv with W and Q will melt waves, and this allows you to very easily pick up a ton of farm in the mid game to keep the gold flowing in. The wave clear in combination with the utility from Sivir's ultimate allows you to contribute no matter the state of the game, which is great if you're newer to ADC since the cold hard truth is that you're probably going to lose lane more than you win when starting out. Of course, you want to be winning lane, but it's honestly not even that bad if you fall a bit behind with Sivir. Being behind in perma wave clearing can be so frustrating for the enemy team to endure. Enemy team could have a massive lead that they want to push, but but you just keep one-shotting waves. Eventually, they will become impatient, look for a dive play, and you just counter with your ultimate's move speed to kite back, pick up some easy shutdowns, and the game is suddenly flipped in your favor. This will happen so often in the lower ranks, which makes Sivir especially good for low elo. The core build to run on Sivir is a static Shiv Rush into Quick Blade second and Phantom Dancer third. Lethal Tempo is the Keystone Rune with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras. Run free boots and biscuits for secondaries. 
In all honesty, there's really just one champion you need when learning ADC, and that champ is Misfortune. MF has a very simple win condition, and it comes down to playing around her ultimate's cooldown and looking to team fight. If your R is down, spam ping the cooldown for your team and advise them not to fight until it's up. If you can just rinse and repeat this, the wins will begin to pile up on the champion. Misfortune is one of the few ADCs that you can win with while having very minimal mechanical skill, which is perfect when you're learning the role. If all you do is press R in your first few games on MF, you honestly still will be more impactful than the enemy ADC a lot of the time. With lethality being the build-in meta, it makes MF's R hurt even more as you're rushing Ghost Blade, grabbing the Collector second, and Axiom Arc third. We especially like Axiom Arc as a third pickup for new MF players because the win condition of playing around your R cooldown becomes even easier. For runes, it's first strike with free boots, biscuits, and cosmic insight, followed by absolute focus and gathering storm for secondaries. If you're new to support and want to play an engaged champion, forget about Thresh, Leona, or Blitzcrank and look to pick up Maokai. Maokai is more of a niche support that is generally not played that often, but he's super powerful and very easy to execute. Many engaged supports rely on a skill shot in order to lock down the enemy, but Maokai is different as his lockdown is completely foolproof being point and click. A Maokai with flash available has the most reliable gank setup for any support in the game, as your W provides that guaranteed CC. If your jungler is looking to gank for you early on, don't be afraid to pull the trigger and look for that flash W onto the enemy ADC. This is your bread and butter for securing early kills for your team, and there's really no counterplay for the enemy. As you reach the mid game with Maokai, the champion is one of the safest when it comes down to securing vision. You should never be face checking Brush with Maokai, as his E allows you to scout without putting yourself in harm's way. You throw a sapling down, and if nobody is there, you can move up and get your wards placed. Being early to objective, securing vision, and placing a bunch of saplings in the entrance ways to that objective offers your team a lot of control. Core build for Maokai is a dead man's plate rush into even shroud second and thorn mail third. Aftershock is the keystone rune with font of life, bone plating, and unflinching, followed by biscuits and time warp tonic for secondaries. If you want to play a support who offers a bit more in the damage department, look into picking up Swain. Swain is actually a bit more difficult mechanically than most of the champions in this video, but once you get his basic combo down, you'll be golden. It's the timing on when you throw down W that can be a bit tricky at first. After your E lands, you want to then place your W to where the enemy is going to be when you pull them in with the second part of your E. A lot of new Swain players will immediately use their pull from E as soon as it lands, but you can actually wait a split second, place that W down, and then use the pull. Swain's E in and of itself can be a bit difficult to hit consistently, but a really great thing to focus on in lane is to throw out the spell when the enemy ADC is going to last hit a minion. This is especially potent when on a cannon wave, as the enemy is not going to want to give up that minion, so if you wait until the cannon gets super low to when the enemy is going to walk up and last hit, and then throw out your E, the hit rate of the spell is going to rise drastically. Level 6 is where you can really begin taking over a Swain. The 2v2 and even 3v3 power of the champion is incredibly strong with his ultimate running, and you should be fishing for those picks with E to then follow up with an all-in. The build for Swain is Leandri's Rush and Zanya's second, and Rylai's third. Conqueror is the keystone rune with presence of mind, tenacity, and last stand. Best secondaries are conditioning and overgrowth. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill capped. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So there you have it guys, 10 of the easiest champions that offer incredibly strong carry power at the same time. Thanks so much for watching, good luck with your rank climbs, and we'll see you in the next one.